Rani, it's great to have you with us in, in the studio. So let's begin by discussing the Chinese economy. Uh, we are witnessing a slowdown in the Chinese economy. FDI is shrinking, consumer confidence is low, and property prices are, are uh, still dropping. What is needed, in your opinion, to revive the economy? Two things. Number one, I think that structural reform is required, but the structural reform that will be instituted will not be according to the Western model. It will have to be something that fits the Chinese model, and I think that is already happening, but they still have a long way to go. The second thing is that the technology of the, of the last 20 years was basically software. But I believe in the next one, two, five years, it will be a hardware technology-led, such as Huawei. I saw the advertisement <laughs> coming here. Uh, and uh, the battery, the, store, uh, the power storage, uh, the EV, and the like. Let's discuss further the property market in China. The, the crisis has pushed dozens of developers into the brink of collapse. Do you think that the worst is over? The cause of the problem is absolutely foreseeable. I've been saying it for the last seven, eight years. The model that they had before was uns unsustainable. They High debt. Before. Yeah. They would not let small bubbles burst. So eventually, the bubble gets bigger and bigger, and eventually it's unsustainable. And so for it to burst, is totally expected, and it has to burst. Is it over? I think in terms of the bankruptcy, is probably over. But how to fix it is another thing. I think two things will have to happen. Number one, again, structurally, something has to happen. In the old days, local governments sell properties to developers at high price. Uh, and then they take the money to do infrastructure. N they oversold for the next 10 years. So nobody's going to buy at high prices anymore. So that, to me, is a real big, big problem. Financially, it is a problem that is big, but it is solvable. China has faced similar problems twice in the last 15, 20 years, and they know how to do it. And the crisis in the property market has led is one of the reasons of deflation that we are seeing for the past almost year in China. Are you worried about a prolonged deflation in the Chinese economy? That is always a worry, um, but I trust that when you try everything and it doesn't work to revive the economy, ultimately you have to do the reform that is a hard thing to swallow. So when they do that, I think that will be when the thing will turn around. I'm not sure if they are uh, doing it adequately at this stage, but they'll figure it out. China has had many problems over the last 30 years, economically speaking, and they are able to solve every one of them. And I believe that they will solve this one as well, but it may take some time. What does this economic slowdown mean for the luxury sector in China? I know you're the biggest landlord for LVMH. Uh, a lot of growth of uh, the sales of LVMH came from China in the past year. China constitutes around 20% of its turnover. So uh, uh, what does it mean exactly for the luxury sector? Well, all you need to do is to read the quarterly result of uh, LVMH, Kering, uh, Chanel, Hermes, and so forth, no doubt it has slowed down in the second half of last year. And I think that that will be a new norm. There will be uneven growth. I believe that a lot of the growth will shift to the second tier cities uh, because a lot of wealth has been created. In the old days, it was Beijing and Shanghai. Now it's everywhere. So there are some strong second tier cities that are doing very well still. Let's discuss the real estate sector in Hong Kong. Prices are at seven-year low. We have seen some measures from the government to revive the sector, including uh, the uh, wavering of the stamp duty. Do you think this is enough? Well, first of all, you have to look at what's the cause of the high price in the old days and what is the situation today. Since the day of the British before 1997, Hong Kong real, real estate prices were artificially kept high because land supply was purposely, artificially kept low. Finally, all those barriers were removed, and so now supply of land will become plentiful. So it is really not just a cyclical kind of a thing, but a structural thing 
that will take many years uh, to accomplish. And I think it's good for Hong Kong in the long run because Hong Kong was just pricing us out of the market, just too expensive, ridiculously so. And so it is good for society in the long haul that prices should come down a little. Uh, and I think that process will be difficult, it will be painful, but I think it's a, a necessary change. So we welcome it. What does uh, Trump 2.0 mean to China and Hong Kong, in your opinion? Well, I'm pretty sure three things will happen if Trump were to win, if Trump were to return to the White House. Number one, it will be further fracturing of the U.S. domestic society. Number two, the further splintering of the international community through deglobalization. Number three, the standing and credibility of the United States will decline faster if Trump were to become the president, uh, which I don't see how it is good for America, but nonetheless, and that will move, I believe, America faster toward isolationism. So do you favor the re-election of Biden, President Biden? Well, I am an American citizen. I have one vote. <laughs> That's all. Uh, and so it's not up to me. Uh, it, it's hard to say. You know, the Chinese say that they are happy. Some Chinese say that they're happy if Trump wins because America would decline further. But I say without a global policeman, the world will be a mess. So I don't know if it is really good for China. But on the other hand, Biden is also attacking China in a very big way, and in fact, in a much more subtle way, and a more comprehensive way. So either way, I think U.S.-China relationship is headed for some rough waters. Uh, at the end, I'm not that worried about a kinetic war between the two countries. I think the leaders on both sides are sensible enough. Ronnie, you're here in the region. It's not your first visit. Uh, are you looking to invest in this region? Well, I have visited the region since 49 years ago. Uh, so I, you know, and, and I've repeatedly come back. Uh, but I never really invest in this part of the world. But to me, this part of the world is the most important part of the world. In particular, last year, when I went to Saudi Arabia twice, I was blown away what is happening in that big country, the biggest of the, all the countries in, that's, uh, in the peninsula. So I think that... So far, it is very uh, uh, economic growth. It's f much faster than any time I would imagine. You're going to retire from Hang Long uh, Properties <laughs> and as chairman of uh, Hang Long Properties, the company that you founded. Uh, what My are father. You, <laughs> your father founded? Uh, what are your retirement plans? Well, you know my wife, Laura. You've met her. Uh, she knows me best. She said, Ronnie, you are, you are working on 10 things at any one time. You are retiring from the chairmanship of one of the 10. I bet you you'll be more busy afterwards. She's right. Uh, there are, I've, I have multiple interests. Uh, I'm very interested in the world. Hey, I like to go to South Pole. I like to go to North Pole. I like to go to many parts of the world. And so there are so many things to do. Life is exciting. So, you know, life will continue. And Hang Lung will do well. Uh, under the leadership of uh, my son and the CFO, uh, the CEO, I think they would do a good job. So I have no worry. And any focus on a particular sector? I know you you have investments in the telecom sector. Also, would would your focus shift there? Well, in fact, we have in the family, not Hang Long, the family, the private, uh, have invested a lot in TMT in mainland China in the last twenty some years. But in fact. The easy money is gone, and it's moving to the hardware, as I said. And so, from the software to the hardware. So, I think that uh, the way to make money uh, in mainland China for the next five, seven, ten years may be different from the last 20 years. Uh, and I just don't think I have the advantage in the hardware business, so I'm out of it. But we're still very much in the biotech space, the world population is aging. Uh, medis medicine, new drugs will be a big thing. Um, the digitalization of, uh, of the healthcare system, the use of AI, all those things where in particular the United States is probably the most advanced. Uh, and so we're investing in those kind of things uh, in the US, in Europe, and so forth. 